Stellar Blade is making waves on the internet right now. That demo that went live last week has proven that the game is way more than just eye candy, and players are gearing up for the full release later on this month. The Digital Deluxe Edition is the top pre-order on PlayStation right now, and all the fake controversies are only going to help drive that, with news outlets like IGN France unable to help themselves by doubling down on complaints about how hot the main character is. All press is good press in this case, because the internet seems to be collectively behind this new game, and I'm here for it. Welcome back to the best Stellar Blade channel on YouTube. Is that too arrogant to say? Whatever, I don't care. I hope you guys have been having a great time with the demo. I'm currently working on unlocking everything that I can in the skill tree so that Eve is completely overpowered on release day. I'm also doing it for a few videos I'm working on, so if you want to see more Stellar Blade content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and get notified. My entire months of April and May are going to be dedicated to this game, so if you need a place to hang out with other Stellar Blade fans, this is the place to be. Today, I have some excellent news that I was going to report on yesterday, but I just couldn't spit my script out. It's much better already today, so here we go. We have a possible sequel on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. And the first game isn't even out yet, so let's check out the details. This is coming from Famitsu, which, in case you don't know, is this Japanese video game magazine. They sat down with Stellar Blade's director for an interview, and... I feel like a broken record at this point, talking about another interview this guy's done, but what can I say, he's just a rock star like that. But Famitsu starts this interview with an interesting question about the characters' ages, asking why they chose to make Eve and Lily look younger. I can already hear the critics foaming at the mouth at that, but the director's response was 24 karat gold. And keep in mind, this was translated via Google, so it's not perfect, but he says, Lily and Eve are not particularly young. Asians around the world tend to look younger than their actual age, so we take this into consideration when designing. All the characters are adults, so they may actually be older than you imagine. That should silence pretty much every critic who took issue with these characters' perceived ages, but let's face it, we know it's not going to. Famitsu followed up by asking, Can you find out the details of your age as you progress through the game? To which the director replied, As for Eve's age, that information might be revealed in the next work. Yes, so if you're concerned about the age, please play the current version of Stellar Blade a lot, enjoy it, and find out the answer in the next game. The director is flat out saying that a sequel is very much possible here. I was already thinking to myself that if this game is a hit, then it could definitely be a standalone franchise. I'm just imagining a Stellar Blade 2 and Stellar Blade 3 and beyond. I wouldn't even complain if it takes the Kingdom Hearts approach and does 20 million spin-off titles. The fact that the devs are even talking about a sequel right now tells me that they're feeling pretty good about what they have. I think they've gotten tremendous feedback from players and fans, and even though the haters are loud, there's really so few of them that they're a non-issue. The game is clearly selling well, and I guess we can take this as confirmation that if it does well enough, then that would justify the studio making a sequel, so here's to hoping. And hey, shout out to you, by the way. Yes, you, the person watching. I'm happy you clicked on my video, and not that crappy one that was next to it in your feed, so thank you for checking it out. Let's keep rolling with this interview, and there were mostly a lot of questions about the game's design and visual elements, which naturally led to something a lot of people were wondering, myself included, and that's whether or not there's going to be a photo mode in this game. A lot of similar games in the genre, like Jedi Survivor, have excellent photo modes that let you take cool snapshots in-game. I've personally used Survivor's feature for making thumbnails back when I was covering that game, and I think that same feature would be perfect in Stellar Blade especially considering all the great assets we have to look at here, it would be a shame to not immortalize them. Famitsu straight up asked if there would be a photo mode, and the director's response was a little disappointing, but he does leave us with a bit of hope, saying, We're currently concentrating on the development of the main game, so we don't have a photo mode ready yet. If there are any requests from users, I will do my best to answer them, though. He also encourages us all to write and to give the team feedback on stuff like that, saying, please, write a lot. So, no photo mode on release, but that doesn't mean we'll never get it. Jedi Fallen Order launched without a photo mode, and it only took a month before the developers put one in there, so I think it's only going to be a matter of time. The director's response makes sense, too. They shouldn't be too concerned with extra stuff like that when they're at the finish line. They're probably making sure the game is polished and in an acceptable state to release before adding a photo mode, which I can appreciate. 
that may or may not be a video essay on its own if this game launches without any bugs and glitches because that's damn near unheard of in the year 2024. Granted, the demo is just that, a demo, so they can polish it up and make it as flawless as possible. But if that's anything to go by, then the game already runs very well, especially in performance mode. When I'm not in performance mode, I definitely notice a drop in frames. The balanced mode isn't too bad, but I usually just keep it in performance so that I can get the smoothest gameplay possible. But in any case, as far as a photo mode goes, here's to hoping, but I understand why the team wouldn't want to focus on anything extra right now. Like I said, this interview is mainly about the game's design, so if you're more development minded, you might actually find some cool stuff in here, so I'll leave the article linked in the description if you want to check it out. There was one part about the game's combat which I thought was really cool because I've been getting some mixed comments on my videos from you guys. Some of you think the combat is excellent, top notch, some of you think it's a little clunky and unresponsive, and I think that really comes down to what you're used to coming into this. This game was being called a hack and slash, which it definitely is, but it's a lot more thoughtful when it comes to combat, and the game's director says that in the interview here. He says, I think most hack and slash type actions focus on how to unleash spectacular combos by bombarding the enemy with attacks one-sidedly. Rather than that, I wanted the battle to be a battle, where the key is to carefully read the enemy's attacks, assess the battle situation, and respond accordingly, making choices at the right moment. Therefore, I think it would be appropriate for the next generation of games to use just actions to stop the flow of enemy attacks or to block them in advance to turn the battle in your favor. He mentioned just actions a few times in this article, and I think that's just a translation error because I'm not too sure what that means. But I completely understand when he says he wants battles to feel like an actual battle. One-sided hack and slash action can definitely be fun, but Stellar Blade isn't trying to be that. It wants to be a little bit more strategic, so if you're a player having some trouble with the combat, try taking it one command at a time until you really get into the flow. This isn't exactly a button mash kind of game. But this interview is awesome, man. I love hearing the developers' points of view and seeing what they have planned for us. Like I said, there is a lot more in this article. If you want to check it out yourself, it'll be linked in the description. One more thing I wanted to bring up is that the development team is already working on a new project. The news actually came out earlier today that Shift Up is currently working on its next... I was about to say quadruple A. It's working on its next triple A release, which is going to be a cross-platform next generation title. God damn, Skull and Bones got me messed up, man. But yeah, it's going to be cross-platform, next gen, that's literally all we know about it, but that means that the studio is really doing some big things right now. I love hearing about this. They recently announced that they're going public with an IPO and they'll be a publicly traded company. They're about to release one of the best games of the year and they already have their hands full with their next major project. Props, 2024 is the year of shift up and I'm glad I get to be here for the ride. That's gonna do it for today's video though, guys. Thanks again for checking it out. Channel members, you guys are the MVPs. Minodam8, Vil Jalmer, Isaac S, Scoots McGee, and Duft Kerr's Hanover. I will never know if I'm actually saying that name right, but thank you all for the continued support. If you want to be a channel member yourself and have me read off your name at the end of my videos, consider joining today. You can click join right next to that sub button, but that's going to do it for me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.